we never know what the future holds. But what I can tell you is that when you get opportunities, it doesn't matter how young you are, you should make the best possible use of them. Today is the 16th of September, 2020. 46 years ago, on the 16th of September, 1974, I made my way into the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation to start my life as a broadcaster. Who would have thought that I would have been still at it 46 years later? But I didn't do it all on my own. I got the support, guidance, admonition, assistance of many, many persons. Not only the general managers, and my first general manager is the late uh, Dwight Wiley. I had general managers like Whitliff Bennett, who also taught me in theater, so he influenced my life in two ways. There's Mrs. Joyce Robinson, several others. But I think the point I want to make at this juncture is that I had the opportunity of having persons who worked in the technical area, like the late Ozzy Harvey, Harry Ashman, the Carby brothers, and several others guide me and assist me in de developing as an all-rounder. Then when I think of the receptionists, several of them who were just class acts at JBC in those days. I'm on the outside, so you might hear vehicles passing by from time to time. You know, people like Mrs. Enright and others. I think of the drivers, Mr. Johnson, Camo, I call him Camo, Mr. Campbell. All of these persons influenced me in some way, shape or form. Uriel Aldridge, director of radio, Gladstone Wilson, uh, Newton James, all of these people who worked at the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation who influenced me in so many ways. What I think I brought to the table was a, a, an open palette, a clean palette, and a willingness to be guided. Somebody guidance was a little um, harsh at times, but very necessary in terms of getting me to get to that place where standards are critical, not just for myself, but for the station. When you are part of an entity, then you are part of how that entity is viewed, not just you are viewed. Yes, I made mistakes, we all do. But the thing is to have prepared yourself not to make as many as you could make without listening and without the training. Oh yes, there was training. For those of us who were there at that time, we had to do three months in-house training before ever contemplating going on air. And when you went on air, it was not to host your own program, but it was to give the station ID. This is the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation. It's now six o'clock. And so we didn't get too puffed up with our own self-importance at all. I was about to say not too early, but we never did get puffed up because, and I put it this way, the moment you think you have arrived, it's the beginning of your demise. So there I was, 1974, and I started my sojourn in media with some of the names I have already shared and no doubt I will share others as I go along. And um, my first program was the Bamboo Lounge. Yes, I smile because um, it was an afternoon program and there was just so much fun doing that. I was a producer and the presenter. I chose my music. It was a magazine program. I had guests, I had features, I had giveaways. And so that was really wonderful. But here is something that this morning as I reflected on the very many things that I have done because of media and as a result of media. In 1977, the first, the very first state funeral I ever covered was that of Sir Alexander Bustamante, September I think it was. And did it rain that day? I was doing a simulcast. That means I was doing commentary for both radio and television on the outside of the Holy Trinity Cathedral. The late Dennis Hall was on the inside and he was like a father and an uncle to all of us. And I speak about myself in particular. And it rained 
of course those days we didn't have devices we had reams and reams of notes and paper because you were told that for an outside broadcast you needed at least five times more information than you think you will need because anything can happen and I sat there in the rain and some woman took pity on me at some point and held an umbrella over me while I did my commentary yes some of the drops from the umbrella coming on the paper but she was doing her best and she was helping me so that was the first big uh, outside broadcast I did in terms of a state funeral since then I've done several others I've done Michael Manley that was also an interesting one because um, the vehicle wouldn't start on the outside at, uh, of the Holy Trinity Cathedral for a while but eventually it, it was started I've done Hugh Sherer and of course, the Governor's General, Sir Howard Cook, and several others. So I'm just using this opportunity to just talk about some of the things that um, media and broadcasting and the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation uh, exposed me to. That very year, 77, after doing the funeral for Sir Alexander Bustamante, I went off to the British Broadcasting Corporation to do production, radio production. And those were three really lovely months. I was exposed to all kinds of things. But the thing about it is that those of us who came from Jamaica and went to the BBC we were always told that we came there very well trained and very well, very well prepared. I want to thank the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation for that. So there I was at the BBC and um, the Open University actually offered me an opportunity to stay on and you know attend their university but I was bonded so I had to come home. You have to do the right thing. That's another thing we need to remember, do the right thing. Thing every time not just a thing that suits you or the thing that would make you a better person so I came back home and um, then excitement first woman to do the very early morning program that was the morning ride early morning it meant getting up 334 every morning yes 334 o'clock every morning and getting to the JBC and doing my shift and somewhere during that period still quite young but I suppose the way I applied myself I was made chief announcer. Uh, so I had to do up the roster for the announcers. If somebody didn't turn up, I had to be there to do their shift. But I learned so much about people and about personalities and about um, gender, yes, and how people would view you if you're younger and you have certain responsible positions, etc. Then I think back to the record library. Uh, Miss Flo Wilson, she was in charge of the record library. That's Patsy Ricketts' mother, yes, the outstanding dancer. O.B. Owen Brown, mm-hmm. And several other people who worked in the record library, many of them overseas now. But we were a family. That was what strikes me about the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation. Noreen Mullings, Marcia Livingston, we were a family, and we still are, because we get together as a JBC family ever so often. You think about the newsroom, people like Errol Lee, he was down in that newsroom, and um, it was quite a period of time, you know? <laughs> Beverly Newell, Errol Lee, and um, Alison Symes. There are just so many people who either in my age group, my contemporary, or a few years older. But those days, the thing was buzzing with activity and lots of energy. And um, the station was a real national station. You know, JBC had a department of theater that was led by Leonie Forbes. And we used to do monthly productions, both for radio and television. Uh, the late Charles Hyatt was also involved in doing some of those productions, primarily for radio. You know, we were life-giving, life-fulfilling. We were, we, we gave Jamaica that uh, that outstanding character as a media house for a station and, and a nation and you know as you never know how life will present opportunities so I decided I wanted to because I'd gone to theatre school prior to getting into media and I decided that it was time to get some formal certification so I applied and was accepted at the Caribbean 
Media, the Caribbean Institute of, School, uh, of, of Media and Communication, as it was called then. It's now the Caribbean School of Media and Communication. And I went there and did my diploma first. And in 1985, I suppose with the experience of working in media and the training that I got in media at the BBC, uh, my documentary, my radio documentary on the Eventide Home File was the top documentary of that year. And, all, and um, Alma Mokien asked me if I wouldn't mind teaching summer school. And that's how my relationship with teaching at the Caribbean School these bikes are crazy. My relationship with teaching at the Caribbean School of Media and Communication at the University of the West Indies started. And um, I taught right up until 2018, and um, I am now an adjunct senior lecturer there. But I'm saying all of that to say this. We never know what the future holds, but if we are wise, we'll use every opportunity that comes to us every opportunity that comes to us because i could have gone to the jamaica broadcasting corporation and just sat around just wasted time i remember hanging out with those guys in in the technical operators i'd go with them i'd have to carry the cables or the mics or whatever because i felt that it was not enough to just be on air you need to know the workings of behind the scenes and those things are what keep you on air I felt that everybody should be treated equally and with respect, and I still do that until today. Well, that's how I am, that's how I was brought up, that's how I am. So, um, it is my 46th anniversary in media, in broadcasting, in journalism, and I give thanks to the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation, to those persons who interviewed me, I had to go through three very serious interviews, and those persons who guided me, Easton Lee, Leone Forbes, Whitcliffe Bennett, Bobby Gisses, Dwight Wiley, and by the way, he was the first black news reader, I believe, on the BBC way back then. And then he came back to Jamaica to be general manager of the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation. And there are so many other people who in ways that they may not even have considered that they were helping me to grow and become a better person and a better professional. If I could say anything to a young person looking at this, who perhaps uh, you have no job at this time, or you're starting out in a job at a place where you think, boy, the salary can't do, do me a favor, make the best of the opportunity. You'll be surprised to know how doors will open. i never forget Gladstone Wilson speaking on air about me one day, about the qualities I have, and he spoke about my, my, my quality of research, going to research. And I, if you give me a funeral to do, I'm going to research it. If you give me a supermarket or the outside broadcast, well, I'm going to research it. Because really and truly, there's nothing like research. It gives you the foundation for whatever you're doing in anything in life, and definitely in media. So um, yeah, we're here. I'm here. I'm giving thanks. And uh, to all those persons, there are many names I would not have called for whatever reason, because I'm just talking off the top of my head. People who have assisted me in so many ways as I grew and developed into who I am. And then, you know what happened? All of that created another opportunity, another career for me, where I became a trainer and a coach in public speaking and platform skills. And I still do that. What a lot to be thankful and grateful for. I'm Faye Ellington, giving thanks on this my 46th anniversary of my life in media, broadcasting, journalism. Started out at the Jamaica Broadcasting Corporation, 5 to 9 South Odeon Avenue in Kingston. Thank you. Faye Ellington wishing you a pleasant day and walk good. Use every opportunity you get.